Hi, I'm Laura Valtorta. Welcome to episode nine of my podcast, B is for Bisexual. This story is called Jacksonville, and it's an ode to my daughter, Clara Valtorta's new small town life in Jacksonville, Alabama. Here in South Carolina, we are grateful for the welcome she and her family received in Jacksonville. Joining us in the reading are Marco, a computer scientist, and Dante, a musician, playing father and son. And that's appropriate because the story is about father and son, and they are father, Marco, and son, Dante. Don't forget to watch my films, including the narrative feature, Bermuda, and the short, Disability, on channels such as Amazon Prime, Filmocracy, and Tubi. My collection of short stories, B is for Bisexual, is available on Kindle. A shout out to listeners in Great Britain, Germany, Canada, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, California, and Texas. And now, Jackson, Jacksonville. My husband had his grown son over, talking about his son's wedding. And we suddenly got notice of Hurricane Laura. Stay inside, the radio said. From my study, I could just barely hear their conversation. Oh my God, I thought. I have no way to escape. There's going to be scrapping and arguing about nothing, about the universe, and I won't be able to work. Ping and Coco don't talk to me much anymore, and that makes me lucky. I'd rather be studying lichen. Why did you leave, Mom? I just got bored. What the hell does that mean? It means I have nothing to do. That's no excuse. Living in this town has defined my life. It cracks you open like a coconut. There's nothing left but the juice. Really? Jacksonville, Alabama? If we'd stayed in Austin, we could have lived a normal, exciting life, being entertained by the restaurants and the music. Austin defines you as interesting. In Jacksonville, you have to make your own identity. I think I'm going to kill you. When your mother and I moved from Austin 20 years ago, we were pretty desperate for friends. And my body felt hollow, like a balloon. We had left all the cool people behind in Austin, Megan and Pedro and the band. Your mother, of course, nabbed the job teaching biology at Jacksonville State, and it was wah, 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 all about her and her opportunity. That's why we moved here and I opened that awful car dealership, the first one selling Kia. A car dealership, blech. I majored in English at college. I'm a writer. You're not special. A lot of people write for a hobby. What happened to your hair? You were bald and now you have a fro? I let it grow. So what? You should try it too. For me, writing is a passion. And I became depressed selling cars. I was doing it to make more money than your mother. But even this doesn't explain what happened to me next. We live in a strange universe. You got that right. You were such an, an adorable kid back then. Now you're just a big, angry lug. Four years old by the time we moved. And so sad. Losing your friends at the Amigo de Ikea was a blow. You started having nightmares. We left behind everything. Your mom didn't have Jessica anymore, her friend from the university. My band broke up. The hot tamales. I missed playing guitar and drinking home brews. I missed my buddies. Then we rented a house that was filled with fleas. Pretty common in Jacksonville. Yeah, the fleas, that's what I remember. They made me itch. We had to bomb the house about five times and exist there for a year before we could move out and buy our oasis on the hill. The one good thing about the rental house was that Stoddard and Pink lived next door. They were from Waco. Coco was five years old. You met her out front, playing on your tricycle. Coco ran over to pet Trixie. Yeah, she was wearing uh, yellow sunglasses with a plastic parrot on one side. Was she? Coco was always cute. I don't remember the sunglasses. Stoddard came running after her. It was a magical moment. I hope you don't mind if my daughter plays here. 
I'm Stod Chambers from next door. He was lean and muscular with a cap of curly brown hair on top. No gray like now. Todd? I asked, getting his name wrong. No, Stod, Stoddard. My wife is pink and my daughter is Coco. Justin Bellicose. We just moved into this rental. He shook my hand even though it was covered in mud. My wife here is Elizabeth. Your mother stood up. I recognize you. Are you at JSU? I just started in the biology department. Botany, said Stott. The pay sucks. I'm grateful to have a tenure track position, said your mother. Women have to be grateful for whatever crumbs they can find. It's not right. I said, women do get treated like dirt. We do a lot of cycling in Jacksonville, said Stodd, looking at me. In my mind, I was already calling him Stud. I wanted to hang out with him. I wanted to rub his back, but I thought he might be too smart. You know, car salesman versus professor. What do you mean, Coco is the only smart, decent one in the family? You have your opinions. So, our family is hung out together. We cycled at the park. We climbed the mountains. We drove to Birmingham for the day to visit the zoo. Your mother and Stodd were the ones who knew everything. The names of the plants, the habit of, habits of the animals. In a more logical universe, they would have been the two people to fall in love. So why didn't they? I don't know. You think I'm gone or something? Stodd and your mother usually walked out ahead of us. I was jealous of their time together. I was stuck back in the pack with Pink who wanted to talk about politics in China compared to Jacksonville, while I wanted to say, What's the point? We're living in Jacksonville now. Ping's answer was always the same thing. One and a half billion people in China, 12,000 in Jacksonville. You can't argue against numbers, Ping said, but can you? I hear the Communist Party in China only tolerates queer people and same-sex marriage because it's trying to imitate the U.S. So who's more powerful, Beijing or Jacksonville? Dad, you have a weird one-track mind. My opinion may be, may be a metaphor for the universe. So talk about the camping trips. I will never go on a camping trip again in my life. You'll be missing out, son. Don't be such a Republican. Take on new experiences every day. <laughs> like you? What's so bad about me? I never hurt you or abandoned you. I pay child support. Not once this Todd and I neglect to invite you to our house. We had a bedroom for you and another one for Coco. We invited you to our parties. Yeah, and I remember the night I showed up for Halloween. I got the wrong night. The wrong group of people. My principal, Mr. Hennessy, was dressed in a giant carrot costume. You never outgrow seeing that. No, son. That was the right night. The right people. You just couldn't take it. You didn't appreciate our freedom. I was nine years old. That's why I let you stay with your mom. You need this space to develop your own personality. <laughs> After catching you in the tent with Stoddard, with your clothes off, humping him, my mind was made up. I never wanted a gay relationship, never. And the explanation from mom the next morning was the worst part. She was scientific and anatomical. You were so funny, screaming and jumping up and down with your hands over your eyes. Mom wasn't even upset. Well, your mother knew me better than anybody, and she was hoping you would understand. Mom is too wrapped up in work and her friends, that's why. She's happy. I can't imagine a worse way to live. She didn't even cry when you left. She seemed happier. Not everybody is bewi bewitched. Your mother and I have remained friends. What more can you ask? I stuck around to help you grow up, and Jacksonville was the right atmosphere. We are famous around here. Every grandmother in Jacksonville knows about me and Stoddard. Your mother can go anywhere in town without shame, without explaining. Everybody's already heard our story. And I was bullied in school? Every kid is bullied in school. You did well in musical theater. Only because Stoddard helped me. Every, I just want to free yourself. You say this marriage is what you want. I get that. But if you decide to break free in a few years, find a real man or a more interesting woman, you won't have to spill your story to me. I'll be your champion. Shut up, Dad. I don't have any need for your help. 
that's what you think now. And then you'll be doing your rounds as a doctor and some wacko guy with a five-year-old child will have discovered he's gay. And what will you say to him? Don't do it. You'll get kicked out of shrink school. <laughs> Very funny. You think I'm kidding? For years, every Baptist doctor told me I was crazy. Who knows? Maybe I'll take the same line as the Baptists. Good luck with this side of history. You're gonna miss me and your mom when you move away. Coco and I are gonna be too busy in medical school. Work is heaven when you have a passion for it. That's what saved me after the divorce. My wonderful hangout bookstore cafe and Stodder's love. If you love medical school and you love Coco, you won't have any problems. She understands me. She knows why I need to become a psychiatrist. Having a psychiatric degree might not be the greatest idea. You might spend all of your work time analyzing yourself. Or my parents. What should I do? Become a proctologist? I thought ophthalmology. Open up your eyes. See what's happening inside the tent. You're disgusting. Son, your mind is the sewer. I live here with the man I love. I have a bookstore decorating in Art Deco style. What could be wrong with that? I have the perfect life. It's wrong because you're my dad. You should be straight. Someday, when you and Coco have a baby, you might understand. Parents are people too. Coco just got her acceptance letter in the mail. She got into Baylor. Oh my great godness, that's in Texas. She wants to study space medicine. Is that a thing? Sure, gravity affects stuff. And anybody who studies space me medicine is by definition cool. Why does a doctor have to be cool? Why does a dad have to be understanding? So I guess you'll be going to Texas too, right? You got into a couple of schools there. Yes, UT Austin. Dad, Dad, are you okay? Are you about to faint? Do I need to call Stoddard? I'm fine. I'll be all right. I was just thinking about the hot tamales. Alex, the drummer, is still alive. So, after 20 years, I'll be living in Austin again. Oh my, oh my, son, I'm so happy for you. Does your mother know? She thinks it's okay. Uh, Mom prefers living in Alabama. She says she could never live up to anybody's expectations in Austin. What does that mean exactly? I don't know, I don't know. Your mother was never into cycling or the musical festival scene. She prefers listening to African roots music on her stereo. Your mother never wanted to get sandy branch at the taqueria. I guess that's what it means. She wore her hair in a bun. She never got any piercings. Your mother wanted a big house and a yard. And that's what she has now. She wanted a pa patio and a pool. She and Martha built that last summer. Your mother is happy as a mouse sitting on a block of cheese. And I'm happy too. But God damn it. I've always wanted to move back to Austin. Dad, stop crying. This is too much. I can't help it. If you find an apartment or a house, you must include a guest room for me. And I don't care how big it is, but I need my own bathroom. I can't take it anymore, Austin. This is way too much. What about Stoddard? What about him? He has his students. He has his Beatrix Potter research on moss. He has his coffee time buddies. What do I have? A bunch of middle-aged women wearing Nikes who love my bookstore and hold their book clubs there every Sunday. But Dad, you love those women, those blobs on a stick. Yes, I love them, but I'm growing sick of them. I'm tired. I want to eat at cool restaurants or South Congress. I want to visit South by Southwest. I want to attend the Austin Film Festival with an all movies pass. Dad, I promise I'll save a space for you. But you can't move in. Just a couple of weeks during the fall, son. Just one long weekend per month. That might be too much. Um, you might have to buy your own house. Why do you get to do everything? Why do you get to be so lucky? Uh, maybe it's because I'm your son, and I think about myself first. What will make me whole? Austin. I want to move back to Austin. The hurricane never hit. I heard my husband going nuts on the screened-in porch, and I thought, to hell with it. Let him move back to Austin. Coco, too. Let them all, them all become Texans again. I love my university job and my quiet life in Jacksonville. 
plotting revenge over scones and wine coolers with a secret Democratic committee. With my 60000 per year salary, even after tenure, I can afford a 3,000 square foot house and save plenty for retirement. In Texas, you couldn't even rent one room in a bungalow with that salary. Let them wrap that in a taco and eat it with hot sauce. The end.